Hi everyone, Anthony Fantano here, Internet's Busiest Music Nerd. We're about to do an interview with Buke and Gase, Aaron Sanchez and Aaron Dyer, correct? Yeah, it's funny that that's the name that you had a question about. <laughs> <laughs> and um, uh, they just came out with one of my favorite albums of this year, General Dome, so of course I wanted to get them in here and sort of talk with them over webcam and, and have you guys watch it. Um, we're going to be taking questions from you guys uh, later in the interview, so if you drop anything into the comment box, I can read it and I can ask them if it is a good question. And, um, and yeah, that's it. So we're basically going to be talking mostly about the new record and just their musical approach in general. Um, and, and that's all. That's all. Okay, so I guess basically uh, my first thoughts on the album that I mean, I really love the album, uh, and what I love so much about it is that while everything sounds so organic and acoustic and, and electric, like everything seems so, you know, it, it feels performed by you guys, and yet it's just so mechanical, it's so industrial, it just feels like, you know, I'm, I'm listening to a machine pump out all of these guitar sounds and, and rhythms and, uh, and, and effects as well. You want to see my prosthetics? <laughs> How many, how, many, how many of your limbs are prosthetic? Just kidding. I don't have any. And they're mechanized, right? Yeah. It's all, it's all robotic. <laughs> <laughs> We're actually not human. <laughs> I guess that would explain it. You know, but it's like, uh, I just think, um, I don't know, do you guys think the idea of machines inspires your music at, 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 in any way, I, I guess? Well, I mean, it's sort of like, you know, I, I'm always feeling like I want the influence of electronic music, in a way, on, on like, organic music. This is, like, a personal thing for me. Like, you know, well, I mean, we were, and we were talking about dance music before making the record a little bit and, like, uh -huh. having that kind of, like, feel yeah. in it. So, I don't know. Like, like I like... I've always wanted to to make music with acoustic instruments that were inspired by more electronic and, and industrial music anyway. So I don't know, this is just a personal thing for me. So maybe that's like coming into our Well yeah, I mean that that's I mean that's one of the questions that I kind of had for later. It seems like your music is so inspired by electronic music or mechanized like electronic music in a way, but you've gone about it. You've gone about recreating that sensation in, I mean, maybe one of the most difficult ways possible, you know, not only through the way that you guys play, but making your own instruments as well, this variation of the ukulele and the bass guitar. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I'm a huge fan of, like, bands like Autechre and Aphex Twin and stuff. So, like, I, I and, yeah, somehow I, I want that infused in what we do, but we're taking this completely strange approach Didn't to it. Didn't we talk a lot about Autechre and how they kind of developed their own software to, to just make Yeah, they're, they're kind music. of and similar that way. Like they'll, they'll just like create really software that makes the music. And so we're kind of like trying to create our own sound world instruments kind of to, to create something new. Not to dork out too much on recent stuff, but have you guys heard the new Autechre LPXI? I, I checked it out online. Yeah, it's it's okay. I don't know. It's it's kind of similar. It's just kind of like in their vein. A little it bit. is. It is. But I mean, the fact that it's two hours and the and the diversity of it all. I mean, it's just so hours vastly long? strange. Yes, it's it's. it's I haven't heard the whole thing. I, I should check out the whole thing. Who does that? It's it, well. I mean, could there ever be a two-hour Buke and Gase LP? I mean, you guys certainly oh, conjure enough wanted. sounds between the both of you. <laughs> That'll be next. Okay. Well, I guess the the, the next thing that I wanted to go on to the, this mechanization of your music. It seems like for me on this new LP, it's been kind of increased. I think because I mean, even on your last full-length album with tracks like a. Uh, Medicina, I don't know if I'm pronouncing that correctly. I mean, that to me seems like more of a smoother ballad where a lot of what's going on with this new album is so staccato and so clunky. Mm -hmm. oh. um, I thought the other album was more clunky. Really? Yeah, it was kind of, I don't know. 
it was more being kicked in the face <laughs> consistently <laughs> as opposed to this one I felt like is more um, like you get kicked in the face and then you kind of pet it a little. Well, this but one this one me. has more cons <laughs> consistency throughout a song. Like like we'll oh, stay yeah. within a groove for a while, mm. if not True. the whole song. Whereas the last record, it was like bam, bam, all these changes happening all the time. Kind of yeah. schizophrenic. If well, so if, if, if there's one thing that sticks out to me, it's that the the songs stick out a little bit more. You know, in that they seem a bit sweeter and 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 catchier, especially with Aaron's vocals. You're talking about the first record. The the newer record, the newer. I would say. Well, the, the, I mean, yeah, we focused on, you know, I mean, we were even talking about, like, let's try to, like, I mean, we're in love with pop music as well, and, and like, love, like, you know, the accessibility <laughs> of a really catchy melody. What? So, <laughs> what do you, mean? you see, you seem almost offended by that statement. In love with pop music? <laughs> I'm not well, sure we, I've we, ever we, heard we, that before. We appreciate it. <laughs> Okay, you know okay, okay, yes. Yeah, right? sure. I mean, appreciate how. Yes, appreciate. A good love melody. Is a very strong word. Right, love. I'm just kidding. <laughs> I'll never say it again. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> um, but no, I mean, we were trying to infuse like that element of like, let's make this really, you know. We wanted it to be accessible. We realized that we're kind of. Um, uh, 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 cerebral mm -hmm. and sometimes that's very difficult for people to get into it's not just like you put it in and you listen to it in the background and you kind of groove around like when you listen to the music or when I listen or when we're writing the music I, it's hard for me to talk about our music as though I'm unbiased and so I'm uh, just a listener but anyways so when I imagine people listening to it <laughs> I think that they want to focus on it I mean, I would want them to. I would. Hope or you, that they you need would to. You need to it. hold their hand a little bit and like. You know, I just lead them. Lead them somewhere in a uh, easy way. Sometimes. Well, that's right. what we're talking about being accessible. Yeah. That's that's why we're yeah. talking about being accessible. But even still, naturally, like, we our don't natural do that. thing is to be more cerebral and to like just have fun with sounds and rhythms and textures and and all of this stuff, and. Uh, and that can be a little difficult to just sit down and hang out with. Yeah, because it, it, it's like the more complicated it is, the more fun it is for us. <laughs> but yeah. maybe not for the listener. You know? Yeah, uh, yeah. Well, I mean, so so the fact that you have a sophomore record, or you know, this this sophomore full length, and you kind of had a, a bigger audience this time around to put out the record for, really kind of influenced the process because you were thinking about what people are going to be like listening. To this album and experiencing it, I suppose. I suppose it did have some influence on it, but it's not like whoa, we would talk ahead of time and say, "Let's make this song um, easy for our easy. audience." <laughs> for I mean, audience. I mean, for me, it's I mean a little bit of that, but I think mostly it's like at the end of the day, I want to make a record that I enjoy listening to and as well, and playing. like the last record. I don't really listen to it, you know. It's 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 like it's it's fun and it's cool and songs are cool and I appreciate how we made it, but it's like not music that I would really listen to. So mm -hmm. I, I I think you know, keeping that in mind, that was kind of our approach with this with General Dome. And 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 in in that frame of mind it's maybe a little more accessible, you know, or just maybe just kind of like making it easier to like get into this melody or this group. Mm. Uh, Aaron, do you feel the same way? I mean, is it like, is there kind of this, what, was, there some, was, was there this moment of separation where you said, okay, I mean, obviously our music is really fun for us to make, but we need to start making music that appeals to me a little bit more to listen to it as well. I mean, do you not return to the first record in the same way that Aaron does? Or I'm different than Aaron. Um, well, good, and, good. I'm, and, I'm hoping for a different I think, answer. <laughs> I think that he and I kind of have this. Um, well, we have some are somehow able to balance each other off, maybe. But I, I think I, for a long time, have tended towards more catchy, more like um, 
I don't know. Like I, I don't yeah, know. Yeah, but sometimes you want to do something completely totally out. Weird. Okay, well I don't know. Okay. <laughs> I think I think we both we both share that problem. We're, we're, I was gonna we're, say we're, something and now okay, I go, lost go, it. Go. <laughs> well I think that I lost it. I'm gone. <laughs> I'm I'm in another I, train is gone. Okay. Well I mean to uh, to, to maybe go on to lyrics, which is something that I'm I'm sure you could talk a little bit more about. Oh, um, yeah. There's one thing I know. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, in, in a duo that seems so sound focused and instrument focused, I mean, how important are, how important do lyrics become, especially on this LP where, you know, uh, I hear you, you guys are focusing a little bit more on accessibility and putting like, I don't want to call them hooks necessarily, but at least mantras, you know, especially on the, uh, uh, the first track where you had that line about waving your hand and yet, you know, your hands are tied and that sort of gets repeated. I mean, you know, a lot of the lyrics seem so esoteric and kind of abstract, but there are moments where they repeat. And while maybe I'm not catching this really strong, you know, political or emotional message in a lot of the songs, like, you know, lines like that must mean something in order for them to Like what? Repeated. Give me an example. Well, I mean... It, to go back to Houdini Crush, like I said, you know, the line about the hands being tied and yet, you know, you can't wave. I'm saying, you know, does that line have some sort of significance beyond other lines on the album because it's repeated or? Um, well, okay, so a lot about how Aaron and I write, it starts out as an improvisation. Mm -hmm. And oftentimes in an improvisation, we'll kind of like get, find ourselves stuck on a loop of just like this something that feels really good and it'll end up uh, developing into something like what that is, which is exactly uh, it's it that was an improvisation, um, and e the lyrics and everything somehow I uh, spit it out, and that's that's ended up um, kind of leading me to write the rest of the lyrics around it. So that that <laughs> line you spit out in the improv. In the improv, yeah. <laughs> And it's this weird, and, it's, and sometimes I it's not actually words, but it sounds like that. <laughs> but I mean, I mean, but then, but then you do write something, so then yeah, I write of, some things, or, or write something around the idea that was suggested in the improv, yeah. and that becomes so that's like a so that's a particular thought you're I mean, you're, you're you're creating something there. Yeah, I don't know. Well, I'm just trying to say that it's not necessarily. It doesn't mean anything more. I mean, what what's a chorus? People yeah. play choruses and they repeat them nonstop for sometimes. It's like annoying sometimes how much people repeat choruses. Mm -hmm. That's the same thing, kind of. <laughs> Maybe it's annoying. I don't know. In a sense, you know. I mean, it, it's it seems it's it's great that you're able to come together with these. I guess sort of uh, uh, attention-grabbing abstractions, and you know, it's, it's through improving, you know, a lot of your words. But I mean, on this album in particular, was was there maybe a moment where you improv something, but then you went back and you actually looked at the line and you know, actually reflected upon it as being supremely weird, or maybe you know, obviously you didn't intend anything because you improved it, but it sort of meant something to you afterwards after having written it or said it. Yeah. I mean, it's a it's a song by song basis for that to be answered. Well, there are a few songs where I went back, or where the improv lyrics were something that I liked, and then not something that someone else liked, and <laughs> so then therefore I had to rewrite them, and I had to become more contrived, and uh, certain ideas were brought forth, and I tried to. Uh, Put them out there in a in a well written way, mm -hmm. uh, and then other there's another song where I'm not gonna name them because it's kind of like I don't really want to give anybody, I don't wanna I don't wanna give you something to expect, you know what I mean? So so another song where I don't like the lyrics at all, I don't understand them, I don't relate to them, I don't know why I'm saying them, but I'm really trying hard to. <laughs> I don't know. I mean well, I mean, <laughs> it's funny. <laughs> if the, I mean, I personally find your vocals on this record, and just in general, to be very emotive. And you know, for a lot of your, I mean, is there some sort of emotional idea or or feeling that you drum up in yourself in order to be able to perform a lot of what you're saying and singing? Well, like, what about like, 
um, the last song that we always play. Tending Tending. to talk. Like you you always say that you have to like kind of emotionally prepare yourself a little bit. (laughs) I mean, kind of, yeah. It's like I got to put myself in a zone to to sing some of this stuff, of course. And it's, it's, I think that's a part of performing. I think it's a part of making something believable. And and it is believable for me. A lot of this stuff is very believable and very relatable. Um, Mm -hmm. There's just a couple here and there that I'm just like, why? <laughs> but whatever, I'll still sing them and, and do my best. <laughs> yeah. um, you know, uh, one thing that I really liked about this record is that you guys layer so many sounds on top of one another with these two instruments that you've you, that are are uniquely yours, and um, you know, you're able to do, with effects and and just the instruments and your playing itself able to make so many different sounds to the point where you have so many harmonies or leads sort of on top of one another, but it doesn't sound like one homogenous thing. And, um, you know, in, in order to get these unique and just diverse sounds with your instruments, was this as a result of just sort of experimenting and you kind of struck gold or was there, you know, dating back to the, to the previous album, was, was there like essentially a first draft of the, of the Buke and Gase? Like there were, are there like, Bukes and is there like a pile of failed versions, and then you know these two versions that you now have are like the, the winning the winners. Um, yeah, there's there's I mean technically the instruments like here, here's a, here's a dead one. Here's a dead one. <laughs> oh, <that's laughs> there's like there's tons of yeah I, I've like my instruments gone through like ten or twelve iterations and <laughs> yeah they've gone through many different like styles of like like some are more acoustic sounding some are of our instruments are more electric sounding and then we've just been experimenting with different pitch shifters and effects pedals trying to add these layers to our, our instruments yeah um like like my instrument is so little and it started out as a toy you know and then and then modified it to be a six string small guitar and mm-hmm. then i just wanted it to have some more balls so that somehow happened. And I understand on this new record Wait. there's a new buke as well. Is that true? What's that? Wait, what? On this new record there's a new buke on the record? Yeah. yeah. And what, yeah, makes, that... what makes this one different from the, from the previous record? I mean, in terms of tone or just the sound of it? Um, well, now it's a completely metal body, which a friend of ours made. And um, I, uh, I think before I was splitting a signal between a, a, a piezo contact mic and a, a pickup on the acoustic one. So it was a wooden body with a, with a contact mic and a pickup for the strings. And I was somehow balancing that out, and it just had a lot of really nasty tones to it that, sh- that were sharp and just unpleasant to hear, like, uh, all the time. And then... Um, so now I'm just using two pickups, and I'm they're both equally going out uh, to the effects pedals. But it's so it's it's not as I don't know like the tone. But the is pickups are it's pickups are attached to the body, so it's like picking up this like acoustic. It's, yeah, thing kind of about it. Does but it's also really like thing. does a contact. It's really bassy and like distorted, and, and like, that has to do with the uh, with the <clears throat> effects pedals. Yeah, I mean we're constant. Yeah, like like every like. Repost had like a whole different like arrangement of pedals and instrument combination, but kind of like this record is a similar setup, new equipment, but kind of like working in the same setup. Like we, we still have, you know, I'm still stringing my instrument the same way. She's still stringing, you know, we're still working within the same uh, harmonic palette. Mm-hmm. Um, but it's just kind of like we've we've flushed it out. I think the next stuff that we're going to work on is going to start changing that, like changing the actual instrumentation Explode more, it. Yeah. and like figure out new ways to do percussion and like you know be able to create completely different sounds. So you're like so so the next evolution of this project could possibly be like different variations of drums or like it, the invention of different kinds of drums. You're yeah, yeah. I mean, not, yeah I'm not going to say exactly, but like, yeah, we're we're trying to figure stuff out. <laughs> mm-hmm. I mean, like, like, how can how can we do more being the two person band? You know? mm-hmm. 
no, and, not, and not do the same. The and exact and same not thing. do loops and not do. Yeah, still know. be able to perform everything still, live. Yeah. <clears throat> okay, still so not. I mean, though, though there are loops sort of being used on this new record now and stuff, you guys are trying to develop more ways to actually make it more live and in person and sort of like all done by hand. Yeah. Are there I mean, loops? I don't think there are any loops. There's no so. loops. I mean, a drone, right? Sort of in the oh, background. Right, right. The, yeah. Yeah, we have, we have like a couple drums. We'll have a pedal that will just like play a mm -hmm. drone. Yeah. But we turn it on. But it's not a rhythmic thing. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, I know you guys uh, recorded this record yourselves as well, correct? The new record. Yeah. I mean, in terms of what we're hearing on the new album, in terms of what we're hearing on General Dome, how much of <clears throat> I guess sort of the magic of General Dome is like in editing or post-production or anything like that, or are you guys pretty much able to drum up all these sounds through effects and just your instruments alone? I mean, is the recording pretty much just raw and straightforward and sort of untouched in a way? It, it's more or less, I mean, the sounds are more, I mean, 90% of the sounds are what we do live. Yeah, so, yeah. So we tried to record as much of it live, like we did the bass drum and the and all the string parts together. Yes. Right? And then we did the vocal later. And you know, the bells we, we added later. some, you know, there's like textural things. There's embellishments. <clears throat> embellishments. Embellishments. <laughs> um, ah. But uh, yeah, and then like a bunch of time just mixing because we're just kind of, we're a weird band to record. Like it's like, you know, I mean, I, I've produced other bands before, like more traditional setup you know, guitar, bass, drum kind of thing. And mm -hmm. like, compared to that experience, like working with us is really weird. Because we're it's just like a weird like... We're like, we're all high and all the, low and very little mid or something like that as far as... Well, there's a lot of mid too. Oh, well, now there's more mid. It's it just, it's so just kind of before. like getting the balance on. of the percussion <laughs> element and the strings and the vocals and trying to make it be as fat sounding as we want to be is kind of a challenge. Yeah. Which is why we're thinking about working with some other people. Because <laughs> it's, it's, it's really Which, difficult to do all of that can ourselves. I, can I just say, we say that we're thinking about working with other people, <laughs> but we haven't actually started even the p process of conceptualizing who we might work with. Uh -huh. Just saying. I mean, is there sort of a dream collaborator like we're that hoping you guys sort of have in mind? Or? Yeah, maybe the more we talk about it, the more somebody... There is like a dream it. collaborator there. For me. Maria. And that would be... Maria uh, Anderson? Yeah. <laughs> no, no. Uh, Well, I mean... No, I mean, engineer-wise? I mean, I'd love, oh, oh, yes. I'd love to work wise, with, like, yeah. with Chad Blake. Totally. <laughs> if he's listening. Chad Blake. <clears throat> that would be awesome. Okay, so Chad Blake... Uh, obviously has a shout out. So I mean, there's this temptation to to work with other people production wise. I mean, is there any temptation to work with other people sort of like musician wise or? Mm, I don't know, we've, we've been toying with the idea but I think we need to figure out what the next iteration of the project's gonna be, like, like how we're gonna do the next sounding stuff, but. I think we just need to record now. <laughs> we, we need to record another record. And just, just well, we need to write some more music blow it up. and see yeah. what happens. But we're not, you know, I mean, we're not. Yeah, it's it's a possible. I mean, we started out as a three piece. Actually, we we started as a drum. We had a drummer. Mm -hmm. um, so we're not totally was, opposed to that idea. But. I don't know, man. Yeah, I listen to that stuff and I'm just like, man, that was kind of boring. <laughs> well, I mean, what you were just saying about <laughs> recording new music. Um, can we expect a new record sooner rather than later, new material? I hope so. It, it, we're, we're a little slow. Just because well, we, we... these things that happen all the time. Like now we're going to go on another tour, and tours are nice and stuff, but man, they kind of take you away from home for a while. And then you get home, and then you have to readjust. But we just finally got a practice phase. That'll mm. be nice. <laughs> Also, we're gonna we're we're working on new ways of writing. So yeah, the 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 old ways of writing for us, which is through improv, is Takes time forever. consuming because we have to <laughs> basically play for hours and listen through the stuff and like arrange it together. And it's just kind of like 
I mean, it's it's kind of it's probably what's dictated what our music sound like sounds like, but I, I, we're interested in experimenting with new techniques that could be faster. So, so I mean, you have this practice space where you're hammering out songs, but you guys are obviously in a different space right now, sort of a workshop where you're hammering where you're hammering out the hardware of what you work with. Yeah, more or Aaron less. Aaron lives mean, in it, a small <clears throat> shop cabin. Yeah, this is no, this is my kidding. this is my workshop. <laughs> He sleeps on the cement floor right over here. No. <laughs> Come on. Yeah, this is serious. <laughs> show, me, show me the sleeping bag. Where's the sleeping bag? Well, I, I made up my bed already, so. It's, it's uh, wait, I got it right here. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. That's my pillow. <laughs> well, there you go. There's. Okay. Anyways. We're we're screwing with you. I mean, anyways, yeah, sorry. <laughs> well, <Next question. laughs> okay, next question. All right, well then, tell me what you guys are uh, doing in terms of uh, your next live date and everything. You know, when can people go and see you perform next? Uh, we are going on a European tour in, in a week or two weeks. And then uh, after that, in the States, we are doing... A tour with a short tour with Tomahawk, mm -hmm. um, and and that's in and then a, June. Yeah, and then a show with and Animal we're Collective. Playing with Animal Collective on mm -hmm. June 11th. And then we're doing Music DC. Now. When is Music Now happening? Oh, Music Now is first. That's oh right, that's that's in on the 12th Cincinnati. of next month. Yeah. Forget it. That's the first show, Cincinnati. Yeah. Okay. All right. I'm gonna leave it at that, guys. Okay. If that's all right with you. We answered all your questions. Thank you. Thank you for answering all my questions. Yeah. In a really fast and personality filled manner. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you for having us. Yeah. No problem. This is a uh, you can gaze if uh, if you guys came in late. Uh, what I mentioned earlier, their new record is titled General Dome. Uh, I will put a link to the review I did recently of it in the description box when this review is finally up. Absolutely love it. Thank you again, Aaron Sanchez, Aaron, Dar Aaron Dyer. I screwed up your name again. I don't even know why. I screwed up the first time. It's just four letters. I had a question the first time. People always want to put an R or a W in there. I don't, I don't know. know. I don't know. Dwyer. Dwyer or Dryer. Dwyer. Yeah. All right. Ooh. Anthony Fantano. <laughs> Aaron and Aaron. Forever. Uh, awesome. Thank you.